Workplace White Collar Investment Crime and Whistleblower Guide Workplace Crime Investment Fraud Guide Introduction Workplace crime exists at all levels. You could say the whole system is a crime, how the banks create money out of thin air, lend it to governments, and the people, then expect that money back that they created out of nothing through the legal process called fractional reserve banking at compound interest. They came out and said that we, the people, have to pay this money back that governments borrowed from banks who created it like magic through a process called taxation so we're all wage slaves. That's the reality we all live under that nobody ever wants to talk about except for a few people called conspiracy theorists who know we are still being controlled just like the Egyptians WHE were controlled by a pharaoh and his Pharisees. The entire human race is being scammed by a few people at the top called the government, big business, the banks, etc. This system we live under does not have to be like this but it is. I live in this system but I try to minimize its effects on me. We're in a matrix ruled by money. The love of money has caused immeasurable amounts of evil, pain and misery. That's where we are at. Money has caused many reasonably decent people to first stray then commit atrocious acts. I blame the system to some extent. There are better ways the human race could manage itself but it doesn't so that's the way it is. I was brought up going to Catholic school with religion classes every morning. Any good student of the Bible has to eventually come to one conclusion. The Bible is a cautionary tickle about how evil the human race is. I recently saw the 1936 Negro movie Green Pastures. The blacks who made that film knew that there is the constant conflict between good and evil in the hearts of all humans as individuals and as groups. When I was about 20, I was at military college taking leadership courses. They taught us theory X and theory Y of people. I don't remember which was which. One side says that humans are naturally evil. When the cat is away, the mice will play, steal, cheat, sleep, etc. The other side says people are naturally noble, good, vital, inspired, dynamic, etc. I tend to think most want to make money any way they can so that they can pursue their lazy, gluttonous, lusty, greedy to evil activities. Watch the true crime shows to see how evil some people are. If one human is like that, we all have the potential to be like that. As far as trust goes, I come from a business family. If you leave store clerks or others alone with merchandise and money, most will steal some of it at some point in time. At one time, I watched all the episodes of CNBC's TV show American Greed. The schemes that some of these people thought up are cleverly evil. The greed never ends. It was one of Dante Alighieri's seven deadly sins from his Inferno in the Divine Comedy. Theft will always be there in the workplace. If you run a company of any size, you need a system of checks and balances for the money. You can never entrust all the accounting to just one person. Get at least two who don't like each other so that they're watching each other. On American Greed, the guy at that big bakery company ran the accounting department on his own. The woman who ran that tunnel digger union fund was on her own to write checks to herself with no oversight. There are con artist type shows on TV, on YouTube, and other places. They're all the same. All investments beyond keeping your money in a savings bank account or with a government savings bond are a risk. The first thing you do if you want to play with stocks and mutual funds is only go with the big companies you see consistently advertising in Money Magazine. The big mutual fund companies are Fidelity, Vanguard, Charles Schwab, and a few others. Other than that, if it's too good to be true, it is. Don't fall for TV ads. Some people think if it's on TV, it's legitimate. Anyone with money can put ads on TV. Well-established companies can be bought by evil people and plundered. People get ripped off out of stupidity and greed. Most people don't even know that there are hundreds of money books at number 332 of any library plus many money magazines. There's gullibility. Don't listen to anyone. When some people see money, they're looking for a way to steal it. 
People install surveillance cameras next to the garbage bin at their businesses because employees are known for taking merchandise out with the trash where a condeferate is waiting. Chapter 1. Crime in the Workplace. Commercial Crime Slash White Collar Crime. Financial crime is any white collar crime where somebody steals money by shuffling papers and computer bytes around. Money laundering, computer theft, forgery and embezzlement are quite popular. Commercial criminals, corporate raiders could be either or all of the following in a publicly traded corporation, CEO, executives, shareholders with 5 plus percent of the shares, new CEO brought in to restructure the company, large investment companies, money manager of mutual fund, retirement fund, etc., anyone that has a large stake in the corporation. Basically, the trend is that one or several of the players get together and decide that the particular corporation is a cash cow ripe for the pickings. It could be a corporation that's doing great or a fledging one, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the players can manipulate the situation such that stock rises in the short term very quickly, within 18 months then they cash in their stock slash stock options, make their killing and get out either leaving a bankrupt company, merged company, or company that basically exists on paper and is dead in the water. Typically, one of the players such as a new CEO will try to get hype in the media by quickly firing a bunch of employees, selling off some divisions, moving some of the operations to Mexico, creating new product lines, etc., in an effort to give off the impression that they're restructuring and getting aggressive so that the stock value rises but the point is that all they care about is the value of the stock not about the growth of the corporation itself such that they're basically plundering the corporation, taking their profit and getting out. Watch out for hype about corporate restructuring or a merger. It may be a good thing but it may be just a short-term gain before the stock crashes. In any event, Although good for the guys at the top, corporate rating is deadly for the employees and other people involved with the corporation. Nowadays, you got a host of companies being found out for shoddy accounting practices and all kinds of other indiscretions. The truth is that these commercial crimes generally steal way more than your average bank heist but up until recently the penalties have been far less. It would be nice for the government to throw all people in the financial investing industry and corporate executives who steal slash extort money in jail for a long, long time, at least 10 years, to get the message out that you don't mess with other people's money regardless of where it is, either a corner store hold up or the guy in the office messing with the computer. Money in fines is not enough punishment because there's no incentive not to do it again if the punishment is just money and the risk of getting caught is still relatively low. Major media doesn't like to cover commercial crime in their news reports because they're kinfolk with these corporate criminals. They'd rather do a story on the poor black guy who stole a car than went on a rampage in a police chase. Collusion is a dirty little secret of Wall Street. The boys in the back room are all scratching each other's backs. Even the media guys are hanging out with CEOs and reporting favorably on their companies in return for a favor. There are politicians owned by Wall Street. They vote on bills for Wall Street over more protection for the people. Beyond collusion, creative accounting to puff up the company's book is big. I read a book by Arthur Levitt, a former SEC chairman, who detailed a lot of these techniques. If a CEO gets to pick his own board of directors then they're all in bed together. In order to run an ethical company, the CEO must be independent from the board. They should feel free to oppose him. They should be independent in order to watch each other for possible wrongdoing or poor work in general. We need more ethical journalists covering corporate crime and more police investigators on the trail of corporate crime. Commercial crimes also span. Environmental crimes. Occupational health and safety. Deceptive advertising. Misrepresenting the product. Fraud in the product like selling a concoction as pure orange juice. Consumer safety issues. Making deals with politicians for favor. Bribing government officials to look the other way like inspectors. Price fixing. Monopolizing the market. Healthcare companies denying claims unjustly. Insurance companies denying claims unjustly. Fraudulent bankruptcy. B. 
Beyond actual crimes, the corporations employ many lobbyists in grey areas to preserve their interests not to mention how much money they contribute to friendly politicians. They also use other questionable tactics like Silence opposing big mouths by any means possible. Set up front groups to advance their interests while posing as concerned citizens. Get rid of aggressive, ethical journalists through the buddy network between corporations. Corporations own the media so they can report what they want. The current successful journalists hosting their own shows are the pro-corporate mouthpieces who openly support the corporatization of the world. Libel laws make it tough for ethical people to want to report something lest they be sued. Even if it's the truth, they're still sued and end up wasting away in court. Are the superstores that open in some areas doing the right thing by trashing all the mom and pop businesses by their presence? Those with the power reward those who serve it and trash those who undermine it even when the latter are ethically right. Corporations now have their logos plastered in some museums for giving them endorsements. Several years ago I didn't know why all those people were protesting whenever there was a meeting of world leaders anywhere. It's because at heart, the political and corporate forces of the world want to make everything into one big homogenous corporate country, the new world order, controlled by them and whatever they say goes. We the little guys either get in line and play the game or be branded as outsiders who can't earn a living because we're not part of the system. Maybe it sounds far-fetched but this is the direction the corporate political world is going. The book Conspiracy of Fools is the story of the fiasco of the corporation Enron. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002 has given the SEC, SEC.gov, more powers in dealing with corporate executives in publicly traded organizations. Books about commercial crime are at hashtag 364.160-169 or HV6691 to HV6769 at the library. Falsifying Documents If there's a way to rip the company off, some employee will try it at some point in time. The range spans the spectrum for simply lying on the time card to creating elaborate plans to steal money like the guy in procurements who created a phony supplier and pocketed all the checks himself. Have a firm written policy in the company manual that states that falsifying or misrepresentation of facts in any matter of company business is grounds for immediate dismissal and could be grounds for criminal charges if money or property is taken, including the theft of time, claiming to have been working when you weren't. Moral, criminal violations. Certain things like threats, assault, violence, theft, embezzlement, lying, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, lewd conduct, possession of an illegal firearm, negative attitude, anger, etc. are grounds for immediate dismissal. After that, go to the cops, find the white collar or business crime slash fraud office. White collar crime websites. FinCEN.gov, FinCEN, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. StopFraud.gov, the Financial Fraud Enforcement Task Force. Securities.stanford.edu slash companies.html, Stanford Securities Class Action Clearing House, Case Index of Companies Facing Federal Securities Class Actions. Fightingforyou.com, Lawyer, Helping Victims of Corporations Get the Retribution and Justice They Deserve. CorporateCrimereporter.com. CorpWatch.org, CorpWatch, Holding Corporate Iona Accountable. FBI.gov slash publications, look up financial crime. Trees.gov slash FinCEN, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN. SEC.gov slash consumer slash cyberfr.htm, online investment fraud prevention from the SEC. DTEX-investigative.com slash issue.htm, D slash text investigative consulting is dedicated to investigating and recovering losses for victims of fraud, embezzlement, and white collar crime. Ethicscheck.com, do a background check on people or have your financial records audited. CorporateNARC.com, SEC.gov slash division slash enforce slash claims.htm, investors claims funds lists the cases in which the SEC has recovered money for investors through its enforcement actions. 
occ.trees.gov slash enforce slash enf underscore search.htm, OCC enforcement actions. StopCorporateAbuse.org AmericanGreed.cnbc.com WhiteCollarFraud.com 8009andFraud.com, 809andFraud, law office, refers to fraud of government contracts. AdBusters.org, 800-663-1243 CFENet.com, certified fraud examiners. CorporatePredators.org CorpWatch.org Essential.org slash monitor FBI.gov FinancialWeb.com slash stock detective FLETC.gov, Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, Georgia Runs the Financial Fraud Institute for Government Agents FTC.gov Fugitive.org slash crime prevention slash white slash white collar crime MultinationalMonitor.org Watch corporations. NASDR.com, 800-289-9999, National Association of Securities Dealers, check to see if a broker was ever disciplined. OpenSecrets.org, politics. SEC.gov slash litigation slash complaints. USDOJ.gov. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Department of Treasury. 800 SOS Buck 703-905-6096 Ustries.gov slash FinCEN International Association of Financial Crimes Investigators 415-884-6600 IAFCT.org National Association of Securities Dealers 800-289-9999 301-590-6500 NASDR.com Free Disciplinary Report on Licensed Investment Brokers National Business Crime Information Hotline 800-241-5689 If you know someone committing any type of crime in business and you want to get them in trouble, give an anonymous report at this phone number. The authorities will not arrest anybody immediately but investigate the situation. National Finance Adjusters 410-728-2400 NFA.org National Financial Fraud Exchange Reston, VA 800-822-0416 They will check up on an advisor for you for a fee of about $50 from their database. They don't cover insurance agents. National White Collar Crime Center. 804-323-3563. NW3C.org. USDOJ.gov. SEC. Division of Enforcement. 202-942-4000. 202-942-4542. 202-942-8090, check on licensing status of stockbroker. SEC.gov. Report Insider Trading and Other Crimes. Securities Information Center. 617-345-4900. SECIC.com. Database of Forged, Counterfeit, Lost and Stolen Securities. Used by investment investigators, not directly available to the public as far as I know although you can make a request through an investigator. Time Finance Adjusters 800-874-0510 TFAGuide.com Chapter 2 Whistleblow Slash Tell on the Bad Guys at Work Whistleblower Info In the movies, whistleblowers are heroes like Aaron Brockovic or Al Pacino in And Justice for All, 1979, but in real life, everybody is earning a paycheck together. If somebody is willing to rat somebody out which is to tell the truth, they could get killed. I know about one unsolved murder I saw on a true crime show where the girl worked in the cargo department at an airport. People think she got killed because she knew some of her co-workers were stealing what amounts to small amounts of merchandise but my point is that people will kill when their livelihoods are threatened. 
Sammy the Bull Gravano was the biggest whistleblower. He killed 19 people. They ended up giving him a five-year Prawazan sentence because he helped convict 30 guys. AR one time, the Mafia controlled all the unions in New York City. They got a kickback for every contract which the people paid for. Illegal dumping of toxic substances is so common that it even happened near where I live. Some people didn't want to pay the money the government requires to properly dipose of certain substances, so they dumped it into a river around here. If you see something being done on the job that's morally wrong, you could report it to the police. There are laws in place saying that whistleblowers can't be fired for whistleblowing. On a bad side, even though there are whistleblower laws in place to protect people who expose wrongdoing, laws can't dictate the way they'll be blackballed and shunned even if they keep their jobs. Who wants to work in a place where everybody hates them or at least avoids them because they have been stigmatized as a big mouth? Tattle Taylor, whistleblower. It's not easy to do the right thing in some circumstances, especially if it's where you work, but your conscience should be your guide throughout life, even if the cost is high. I recently saw some FDA whistleblowers say they had to do the right thing by exposing drug test cover UPS because they had to live with themselves. If you have a case against somebody with facts, not lies, and you want publicity, make a video and put it on the internet. If it's good, the mainstream media will pick it up. Whistlebauer websites. Angelfire.com slash New Jersey slash JH graph slash on ed.html, a personal account about American government conspiracies by a whistleblower, it's still there, I saw it in 2022. Answers.com slash topic slash whistleblower. Asacon.com slash OALJ slash libwhist.htm, Whistleblower Law Library bbc.co.uk slash consumer slash tv underscore and underscore radio slash whistleblower slash index.shtml, a program which investigates antisocial or criminal practices in organizations. dol.gov slash compliance slash topics slash whistleblower.htm, labor. employeeissues.com slash whistleblower.htm en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash allen underscore jones underscore whistleblower, pharmaceutical industry. en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash anthony underscore russo underscore whistleblower, pentagon papers. en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash david underscore graham underscore whistleblower, fda whistleblower. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash national underscore security underscore whistleblowers underscore coalition. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash whistleblower. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash whistleblower underscore magazine. Jeffrey W. Igand.com, tobacco whistleblower. OALJ.DOL.gov slash libwhist.htm, OLJ Law Library. OSC.gov slash WBDisc.htm, U.S. Office of Special Counsel. OSHA.gov slash DEP slash OYA slash Whistleblower, Health and Safety. Whistleblower.org, Government Accountability Project. Whistleblower.ucsf.edu. Whistleblowerlaws.com. Whistle-blower-net.com. Whistleblower-net.de, Germany. Whistleblowers.org, National Whistleblower Center. Some whistleblower slash crime phone numbers in the federal government. FIC.info.gov, Government Telephone Book. FBI.gov slash contact slash FO slash FO.htm number sign cities, Federal Bureau of Investigation. USDOJ.gov slash DIA slash contact info, Drug Enforcement Agency. Army Whistleblower Hotline. 800-424-9098. Report Fraud and Corruption by Contractors. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. 888 ATF Tips, General Tips. 888 ATF Fear, Arson Hotline. 888 ATF Bomb, Bomb Hotline. 800 ATF Guns, Guns. 800-659-6242, stolen, hijacked or seized cigarettes. 
800-800-3855, Suspicious People Buying Fertilizer. Department of Homeland Security. Federal Computer Incident Hotline. 888-282-0870. Ready.gov. Federal Bureau of Investigation. Whistleblower Hotline. 800-869-4499. FBI.gov slash contact slash FO slash FO dot HTM number sign cities. Federal Emergency. Management Agency. Fraud Hotline. 800-323-8603. FEMA.gov. Federal Trade Commission. Consumer Fraud Complaints. 877-FTC-HELP. 877-ID. THEFT, Identity Theft Hotline. FTC.gov. Internal Revenue Service. Criminal Investigations. 800 829 0433. IRS.gov. Call when you suspect a violation of the tax code. You're eligible for a reward in some cases. Navy Whistleblower Hotline. 800 522 3451. Taxpayer Complaint Hotline Number 800 Audit Time IRS.gov Complain About the IRS Transportation Security Agency Security Concerns 866-289-9673 U.S. Customs 800 BEALERT CBP.gov Drug Smuggling Hotline U.S. Marshals Service Fugitive Tip Hotline 800-336-0102 Whistleblower Hotline Department of Agriculture 800-424-9121 USDA.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of Commerce 800-424-5197 DOC.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of Education 800-647-8733 ED.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of Energy 800-541-1625 DOE.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of the Interior 800-424-5081 DOI.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of Justice 800-869-4466 USDOJ.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of Labor 800-347-3756 DOL.gov Whistleblower Hotline State Department 202-647 3320 State.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of Transportation 800-424-9071 DOT.gov Whistleblower Hotline Department of the Treasury Internal Revenue Service 800-359-3898 Ustries.gov IRS Whistleblower Reward Service if you know someone who's systematically and substantially evading taxes, you can claim a reward by turning them in. Section 7623 of the IRS Code authorizes a reward for turning anyone in who violates federal tax law. You have to fill in Form 211 and use your real name to claim it. Mail or email the completed form to informants claim examiner at the nearest IRS office to where you live. The IRS says they'll keep your name confidential such that the person you turned in will never find out it was you who did it. Rewards are based on the value of the information given and the amount recovered. There are three different scales, generally 1, 5 and 10% of the first $75,000 recovered plus lower percentages for more up to $100,000. Refer to section 7623 of the IRS code and fill out form 211. Criminal Investigative Division IRS Washington, D.C. 20224 
202-622-3200. IRS.gov. IRS Internal Security. 202-622-4610. Watches over unscrupulous employees. Whistleblower lawyers. EmploymentLawGroup.net, based in Washington, D.C. FraudHotline.com, law firm, providing representation for key TAM whistleblower actions under the False Claims Act. Key-TAM-Attorney.com, New York City firm, focusing on whistleblower or key TAM cases under the False Claims Act. WarrenBensonLaw.com, San Diego firm emphasizing whistleblower cases. Whistleblower.info Whistleblower.labovic.com, whistleblower lawyer and attorney Labovic Law Firm, Florida. Whistleblower.lawyersandsettlements.com, whistleblower lawyers, articles, resources, news, forum, and stories. Whistleblowerlawyerblog.com. Whistleblower-lawyer-referral.com. Yourlawyer.com, key tam whistleblower law. Whistleblowerade.com. Chapter 3. Investment Fraud Guide Investment Scam Slash Investment Fraud 1 If an investment company is not transparent, if they don't open their books to show who they deal with it's a scam. If they make big gains while everybody else is losing, it's a scam. If they operate offshore, it's probably a scam. If you can't understand it in simple terms, it's a scam. If the top guy is flamboyant and likes to spend money, it's a scam. If they are conspicuous consumers, it's a scam. The oldest scam in the book is the pump and dump, buy low, lie, sell high. The latest scam is the internet where some Joe posts a bunch of messages on message boards telling about how great a stock is then selling his once the stock goes up. I have seen a megaphony gold mine scam. I have seen phony biotech and tech stock scams. People create dummy companies with impressive sounding names, go public, write up phony reports with short-term gains and scam people. This seconds can't check everyone out. By the time they get to a scam company, they're gone. The moral to the story is don't invest in new, upstart companies that try to persuade you with the get on the ground floor pitch, we're gonna be the next Microsoft. Despite the so-called bull market on Wall Street, appearances can be deceiving. There are vultures there ready to pounce on the naive, middle-class investor. Con artists and organized crime are everywhere there is money to be made on suckers. I still get spam. Every once in a while, I reply with a funny message telling them they're idiots because nobody is sending them any money. The most typical con is to start a dummy company, hype it up, print up nice pamphlets and encouraging news, Pay off stockbrokers to sell the stock then it's a bust and you're left holding the bag with nothing. Do your research. If you want to invest, stick with the established companies with some track record for several years. Stable growth is better than risky hype any day. This Secretary Act of 1934 says you have to have a device, scheme, or artifice to defraud which means you have to say something fraudulent then act on it. If you go on the internet and give bad advice, you can't be charged for it but if you say something fraudulent or do some scheme and trade on it, you're cooked like 15-year-old Jonathan G. Labette of Cedar Grove, New Jersey who got caught and made the news, some kid getting arrested. In a nutshell, be wary of promises of quick profit or insider knowledge with pressure to invest quickly and be wary of promoters who try to hide their identities. There is a documentary around about Elizabeth Holmes of their ANOS. Some con artists know they're crooks at the outset. Others have a delusion about themselves that they're doing great work. If you watch enough white crime stories, you eventually realize that a lot of these people thought they were doing great work. I have no belief in that fraud called the mental illness industry but they have a mental illness called narcissistic personality disorder for people who are so delusional they don't know they're evil scumbags. Many of those guys on American Greed lived in some kind of fantasy bubble. Gold mine scams, new high-tech company scams and the internet are the new playground for scam artists. Just because someone has a website or ad online doesn't make them legitimate. The online service providers sell space and they usually don't check or care what the buyer puts there. 
I heard of one scam where some guy printed up some bogus bond certificates on his computer, made up some ridiculous interest rate, created a phony company name, put up a website and collected over $3.5 million before he got caught and the thing is it's only a white collar crime. These guys rarely do much time even if they swindle multi-millions of dollars. Successful investment swindlers use every trick in the book and some that aren't even recorded to convince you that none of the descriptions and precautions in the following pages apply to them. After all, they are offering you a once in a lifetime opportunity to make a lot of money quickly and you do trust them, don't you? Investment swindlers are a faceless voice on a telephone or a friend of a friend. They may perform surgery on their victim savings from a dinghy back office or boiler room or from an opulent hashtag in the new bank building. They may wear three-piece suits or they may wear hard hats. They may have no apparent connection to the investment business or they may have an alphabet soup of impressive letters following their names. They may be glib and fast-talking or so seemingly shy and soft-spoken that you feel almost compelled to force your money on them. The first rule of protecting yourself from an investment swindle is to rid yourself of any notions you might have as to what an investment swindler looks like or sounds like. Indeed, some swindlers don't start out to be swindlers. There are case histories in which individuals who held positions of trust and esteem have sacrificed their ethics for the fast buck of running an investment scam. In still other cases, Investment programs that began with legitimate intentions went sour through happenstance or poor management leading the promoter to mishandle or abscond with investors' capital. Protecting your savings against fraud involves at least three steps. Carefully check out the person and firm you will be dealing with. Take a close and cautious look at the investment offer itself. Continue to monitor any investment that you decide to make. No one of these precautions alone may be sufficient. Although victims of investment fraud can differ from one another in many ways, they do, unfortunately, have one trait in common, greed that exceeds their caution plus a willingness to believe what they want to believe. Swindlers simply attempt to mimic the sales approaches of legitimate investment firms and salespersons namely telephone, direct mail and advertising. Even if a swindler has to make 100 or 200 phone calls to find a mooch, he figures that the opportunity to pocket thousands of dollars of someone's savings is still good pay for the time and cost involved. Some sellers of fraudulent investment deals buy bona fide mailing lists, names and addresses of persons who, for example, subscribe to a particular investment-related publication, who have responded to previous direct mail offers or who have other characteristics that swindlers look for like being in the upper socio-economic class. A newspaper or magazine ad may offer profitable opportunities far more attractive than available through conventional investments. Once you have taken the bait, the swindler will then attempt to set the hook. Be cautious of strangers offering you something that sounds too good to be true. Never go for an unsolicited investment offer. Don't invest in anything based on appearances. Just because an individual or company has a flashy website, it doesn't mean anything. Websites can be created in a matter of minutes. After taking money for a few months, they disappear. Forget about dealing with individuals or companies from outside your own country. Buy ADRs, foreign stocks, on your regular stock exchange. Buy stocks, bonds, and funds from the big companies only. Everything else could be fraud. Investment scam slash investment fraud too. The only rule is do not invest money in anything unless you're buying real estate like a house or you're buying stocks, bonds, or funds from one of the big, long-established companies like Fidelity or Vanguard. Buy stocks through TD Ameritrade. Everybody else could be a scam, especially some individual acting like a big shot. Many con artists are one-man operations who hire some stupid people to make it look good but it's almost always one guy masterminding the scam. That can't happen in a big company. Bernie Madoff controlled everything in his small outfit. The classic Ponzi scheme like Bernie Madoff and many others pulled off is that they claim to be money managers, investing people's money for a fee. They get a few investors, make up phony returns that make it look like they're up 20 or more percent which is a great return but it's all fake. 
if an investor wants his money at this early stage, they give it to them from the money they get from new investors but no stocks and funds were ever traded. The portfolio is fake too. People talk about the great returns so other people want to get in. Money flows in and for a while investors are rewarded with a good return until the interest checks stop coming. Phone calls go unanswered or the fraudster lies, saying the check is in the mail. Some guys skip town with all the investors money then start again somewhere else. The guy had simply been taking a portion of the investment of others and paying it back to the members until he had amassed enough to leave town. This simple fraud is done everywhere even in churches. Church members are targets because there is a natural trust among the church community which wolves in sheep's clothing exploit. The promise of large returns and the fact that others had already been well paid in the first year brought the suckers running, wanting to get on the bandwagon and make money. It's easy to forge investment statements or test results on a gold mine. Fraudulent offers may come by telephone, email, mail, or TV and radio ads. There was a TV ad soliciting a minimum investment of $5,000. Who is stupid enough to hand some stranger $5,000 who you've never heard of before because of a slick TV commercial? The fraudsters are very creative. They send attractive and official. Looking literature but so what? It's just the art of fraud. Anybody who invests money in anything they got from a spam email is really stupid. For telemarketing, hang up right away. Some of the many schemes are. Spam. Phony websites. Ponzi schemes. Pyramid schemes. False advertising. Boiler room telemarketing. Anybody can create some microcap company which is traded on the over-the-counter OTC markets, OTC bulletin board OTCBB, hype it up, sell stock then bail. Don't reply to spam. If you reply to the sender to remove you from their mailing list, they just keep sending you more spam. Be on the lookout for phony websites. Claiming to be security regulators, your bank, credit card company, etc. Your bank will never send an unsolicited email asking for your personal information. If your bank sends you an email, don't click the link they give you. Type the bank website into your browser. Even though investment crooks know that regulatory agencies regularly monitor ads in major publications, some nevertheless use such publications in the hope of being able to hit and run before an investigator shows up. Others advertise in narrowly circulated publications they think regulators may be less likely to see. Some swindlers go first class. Using profits from previous swindles, they rent plush offices, hire an interior decorator and pretty receptionist and open what has the appearance but not the reality of a reputable investment firm. You may even have to phone for an appointment and once there don't be surprised to be kept waiting, that's intended to make you all the more eager. This kind of swindler's success depends on how long he can keep his victims from knowing they are being cheated. Investors are assured that their large profits are being reinvested to earn even larger profits. Such a swindler may join local civic groups, contribute to charities and generally play the role of solid citizen. The crux of the investment scam artist is his ability to be a good salesman and tap into your greed factor. They can promise you the world with the expectation of large profits, low-risk investment, a sure thing, a hot new technology stock, the urgency of the moment to get in on the ground floor and finally, the ability to be your friend and get your confidence. Ponzi Scheme One of the oldest schemes going involves paying fast, large profits to initial investors, actually from their own or other people's investments, knowing that they are likely to recommend the investment to their friends and these friends will tell their friends. Soon, the swindler no longer needs to find new victims, they will find him. It's become one of the oldest and most often employed investment schemes because it's proven to be one of the most lucrative. The infallible forecaster. The routine goes like this. Jim phones someone we will call Mrs. Smith and quickly assure her that, no, he doesn't want her to invest a single cent. Never invest with someone you don't know. 
but he says he would like to demonstrate his firm's research skill by sharing with her the forecast that so-and-so commodity was about to experience a significant price increase. Sure enough, the price soon went up. A second phone call doesn't solicit an investment either. Jim simply wants to share with Mrs. Smith a prediction that the price of so-and-so a commodity was about to go down. As predicted, the price of the commodity subsequently declines. By the time Mrs. Smith receives a third call, she is a believer. She not only wants to invest but insists on it with a big enough investment to make up for the opportunities she had already missed out on. What Mrs. Smith has no way of knowing was that Jim had begun with a calling list of 200 persons. In the first call, he told 100 that the price of so-and-so commodity would go up and the other 100 were told it would go down. When it went up, he made a second call to the 100 who had been given the correct forecast. Of these, 50 were told the next price move would be up and 50 were told it would be down. The end result, once the predicted price decline occurred, Jim had a list of 50 persons eager to invest. Phony Gold Not only did the two brothers have a fancy office building with their own company name on it but the investment offer seemed sound and straightforward, instead of buying gold outright and holding it for appreciation, make a small down payment that the firm could use to secure financing that would permit much larger quantities of gold to be bought and held for the investor's account. That way, when the price of gold rose as was sure to happen, investors stood to realize highly leveraged profits. The company provided storage vaults where investors could view the wall-to-wall -wall stacks of glittering bullion. By the time authorities caught wind of the scheme's suspicious smell and looked for themselves, it turned out the only thing gold was the color of the paint on the cardboard used to construct look-alike bars of bullion. The counterfeit gold, however, proved far easier to find than the millions of dollars of investors' money. Con artists have a sucker mailing list that they sell to each other. Most con artists try to control the conversation by talking most of the time. The way to disarm them is to ask questions like these. Where did you get my name? What risks are involved in the proposed investment? Can you send me a written explanation of your investment so I can consider it at my leisure? Would you mind explaining your investment proposal to some third party, such as my attorney, accountant, investment advisor, or banker? Can you give me the names of your firm's principals and officers? Can you provide references? Do you have any documents such as a prospectus or risk disclosure statement that you can provide? Are the investments you are offering traded on a regulated exchange such as a securities or futures exchange? What governmental or industry regulatory supervision is your firm subject to? How long has your company been in business? What has your track record been? When and where can I meet with you or with another representative of your firm? Where, exactly, will my money be? And what type of regular accounting statements do you provide? How much of my money would go for commissions, management fees and the like? How can I liquidate? i.e. sell the item I'd be investing in, if and when I decide I want my money. If disputes should arise, how can they be resolved? The bottom line is before you invest, investigate with federal agencies, regulatory agencies, the BBB, consumer protection against size, trade organizations, and other professionals in the field to get their opinion if they have even heard about the company. Bear in mind that con artists are slick. Never just go by their word alone that it's a sure thing waiting for you. Don't invest just because friends are blindly investing. Make a phone call to the financial editor of your local newspaper. Although newspapers don't give endorsements or make investment recommendations, they may be aware of a swindler who is working a scam in the area. If you become suspicious or overly uncomfortable with an investment you have made and if you are unable to totally resolve your concerns, the best thing you can do is try to get out of it as quickly as possible. That means demanding your money back, accompanied, if necessary, by threats to contact authorities. You might or might not get it. The best you can hope for, if indeed there's fraud involved, is that the swindler may decide to refund your money rather than risk having you blow the whistle while he is still on the prowl for new investors. If that happens, 
consider yourself more fortunate than most. No doubt you will be told that backing out now would be anything from contractually illegal to a terrible financial mistake. Swindlers figure that every once in a while some of their more fidgety investors simply have to be reconvinced. He may tell you that you are so close to making really big money or the investment now looks even more profitable than originally expected. If you insist on a refund of your investment, insist on it immediately. Ask to pick it up yourself or offer to pay the cost of having it sent by overnight mail or wired directly to your bank. Don't settle for it will take a week or two or the check is in the mail. As everyone knows, checks seem to be lost more often than any other type of mail. If you don't get your investment back, and chances are you won't, or even if you do and still suspect a swindle, report it promptly to the appropriate authorities and regulatory officials. They may be able to conduct an investigation and, if called for, seek legal action to impound whatever funds the firm still has. The majority of individuals and companies offering investments to the public are subject to some sort of regulation and may be subject to multiple regulation. Those which trade in futures contracts and options on futures contracts are regulated by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, a federal agency and by National Futures Association, 800-676-4 NFA, nfa.futures.org, an industry-wide self-regulatory organization authorized by Congress. In the securities and securities options business, the federal regulatory agency is the Securities and Exchange Commission. There is also an industry self-regulatory organization, the National Association of Securities Dealers. The Federal Trade Commission has jurisdiction over advertising, franchises and business opportunities. Deals involving interstate promotion of land sales are regulated by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development. By contacting the appropriate regulatory organization, you can generally find out whether the firm or person is properly registered to engage in that type of business and whether any public disciplinary actions have been taken against them. If the mails are used in promoting or operating a phony investment scheme, federal postal inspectors want to know about it. The postmaster in your community can put you in touch with them. Fraud involving any form of interstate commerce is also of interest to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The nearest office should be listed in your phone directory. See the movies Wall Street from around 1985 and Boiler Room from 1998 which are about some of the shady dealings involved in the stock trade. All investing is a risk, most marketing is hype, it's a lie. If you see hype, go the other way. Stick with basic stocks for the long run. Insiders create the bubbles, reap the rewards then leave the outsiders, the public investors, holding the bag. Is this criminal or is it common sense? You are to blame too for being so greedy, getting caught up in the hype and not doing your homework, taking a rational look at what was going on. You bought into the hype like a fool and now you are the fool. Be conservative rather than follow the glitz or if you decide to follow the glitz, watch it and when you feel the tide starting to turn, sell it all in one shot, buy your boring stocks and watch the coming debacle. The problem with the investment business for the, the consumer is basically caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. When you check out an investment vehicle, whatever it mug height be, bonds, funds, stocks, etc., the person selling the stuff to you wants to sell to make his commission so who is the onus on? Is it on him to be honest but any reasonable consumer should know this guy or gal is at least part hype? They can always say they were acting in good faith with good intentions and didn't know the stock they sold you was gonna crash. They can lie to you all they want about an investment and if you buy it and it tanks, you really have no evidence against the guy except what he told you and you can't prove that. It's his word against yours. The other big grey area is in the investment media. There are a few objective financial reporters and financial magazine slash newsletters out there but most of these guys well hype up the stocks they own and hype up the stocks their firms are underwriting. You can't get them for fraud because they just have to say they gave the best advice at the time for the facts they had and then they'll throw it back in your face and say you're supposed to be a savvy consumer and check everything out for yourself before you buy an investment vehicle. On the internet, 
people will spam you with messages touting a stock, go in on chat rooms and news groups reserved for the general public to hype up a stock and set up an elaborate website for some scam or questionable company they're hyping up to make it appear like a real winner. One guy says if you're investigating a company, watch for cash flow, where do they get the money that's coming in the door? Is it made by hyping up a stock, borrowing or real sales and services? Whenever just about everybody is hyping up a hot, new trend through irrational exuberance and the market is going through the roof for reasons that don't seem logical, watch out for a bubble that's about to burst. Never forget the great internet stock debacle. They say it's caused by greed, the greed of the sellers, the owners, the media dudes and the general public who all want to get rich fast. It's the blind leading the blind, all on false hope. Charm, charisma, and hype can't compete with good sense and rational, independent analysis. Every new technological advancement that's pretty good is always hyped up as the greatest thing ever created whereupon the Wall Street cats go into overdrive, competitors find a cheaper way and the industry, regardless of what it is always loses favor after a few years. Don't hang on to a trend for greater returns. Make a decent profit then sell before the crash. Be very skeptical about who you trust. Don't trust too many of them guys you see on TV hyping up stocks. Dig further to see if they work for somebody or are they simply objective reporters trying to do a good job. Don't buy and hold for the long run because there will always be recessions. Buy, watch, and sell when you feel the market is tumbling. Don't invest in companies whose function is to invest in new companies in the latest technological trend. When the bubble bursts, they go in a flash. Beware of real estate bubbles in an area too. Be wary of the hope in international stocks and funds. IPOs are generally all hype. Stay away. Try hashtag 332.8097 or HG4928.5 at the library. How do you protect yourself? Financial service professionals have one objective, to make money for their firm and for themselves. If they don't, they're fired. Their best interest is always themselves, not you. It's not even about the individual, small-time investors anymore. The big money is in underwriting new IPOs. This is why you have to be careful about buying any new stock. These financial companies who underwrite a stock, manage it going public, are thinking about making money fast, not about what great things this company will do for the world. Financial analysts make money when they hype up stocks. When they can't recommend one anymore, rather than criticize it, they stay silent. Why is it that there are way more buy recommendations than sell or hold? You have to have the attitude that it's them against you because it is but the great thing is that you don't need a broker and you don't have to listen to the guys on TV much. You can go to websites and see what stocks are doing and analyze them for yourself. Understand the graph. Great new companies go up like a rocket for the first 1 to 10 years then they always go down because of competition, other new products from someone else or the institutional investors get tired of them and sell. Never trust anyone with your money. It has often been said that investors who are built out of money are at least partially responsible because it is greed that makes them fork over money to schemes by con artists and for bad advice from unscrupulous financial advisors. My first rule is that nobody really needs a financial advisor, except to do taxes, because money education is not rocket science. It's not that hard to educate yourself about money then pick your own stocks, mutual funds, and other investment vehicles. If anybody phones you up claiming to be an investment advisor or representing anything involving money, offering you an investment opportunity, don't waste your time. Hang up. Ignore all email spam advertising investment opportunities. Don't listen to what most internet chat rooms, blogs, and news groups say about the stock market. Trust only reputable websites and reputable investment publications. There is a lot of hype about stocks on the TV money shows. You have to understand the concept behind the statement, don't ask a barber if you need a haircut. That's how they make their money. They will always say yes. The same holds true for everybody in the investment industry. 
they have to be bullish because that's how they make money even if they're lying through their teeth. They will never tell you not to buy. I've never seen one advisor recommend that you sell or don't buy more stocks than they tell you to buy in any interview on TV. It's always a rosy picture, buy or hold. If any telemarketer calls you about stocks, you get email solicitations or you get free investment publications urging you to either invest in a certain three or four stocks or buy the subscription, don't listen. A good researcher goes to the good information where he already knows it is. He doesn't listen to anything that comes to him unsolicited. I like the guy at Investors.com, Investors Business Daily, because I can tell he's meticulous and sincere and I've been seeing him analyze stocks for 10 years now so I know who he is and what he's about. I trust his judgment as being as good as you're gonna get but not even he has a crystal ball. There's a Hollywood movie around called Boiler Room. It works like this with scams in the real world. These guys have the savvy to put together phony, shell companies, get them listed on some exchange even if it's just OTC then hype them to death as the next big thing and they're so smooth that suckers fall for it. For financial analysts, it's not about objective research. It's about one things, sell as much stock as possible. Be wary of the hype surrounding every IPO. People use all kinds or clever fraud to hype stocks up on the internet by pretending to be ordinary, objective people passing off real important information. Don't trust anyone with excessive optimism. Don't listen to anyone's hot tips. Do your own research through the good investment publications. I don't want to get too paranoid but there aren't too many good guys in the world of investing so be wary. You can read quarterly financial statements at sec.gov and look at either the big, independent investment publications, personalwealth.com, valueline.com, money.com, thestreet.com, zax.com, bloomberg.com, or the small, loner intellectual types, hulbertdigest.com, publishing their own. You can usually pick out the good ones from the bad by style of writing. The bad guys use puffery and hype. The good guys write in-depth reports. Don't be taken in by any hype. Don't invest money with small investment firms or new ones. Stick with the established discount brokerage companies and established mutual fund companies. You can do a check of the disciplinary record of stockbrokers by filing a request with the SEC at sec.gov. You can easily nullify your paranoia about your stockbroker by not having one, picking your own stocks, buying through a discount brokerage. If you're with a broker and feel he has overstepped his authority and slash or swindled you, report him to the SEC and file a civil lawsuit against him. If he has a number of dissatisfied clients, file a class action lawsuit. Don't trust anything an investment ad says. Watch out for all the hidden fees with mutual funds. I read an article by a former chairman of the SEC and he tore the mutual fund industry to bits as a bunch of scammers with their hidden fees. Don't give anyone power of attorney over your money. Investing in futures, options, and short selling are all investments that require a good grasp of the subject in order to succeed. Don't go to free investment seminars. They are a rah-rah pitch designed to sell you some book or tape package or even worse, the latest new hot stock or fund. Boiler Room Operations is a scam where a bunch of guys either run a legal brokerage house or pretend to. They call people cold turkey, send out free investment letters, etc., all aimed to butter people to make them invest money in what are essentially worthless investments. The solution is to never buy from anyone soliciting with an investment opportunity. But only through your discount brokerage once you make your own decision. When there is irrational exuberance in the stock market, cease all investments in anything that's not an old dinosaur blue chip stock. Complaints and lawsuits against financial services companies. You can check out your brokerage firm and the person you're dealing with by contacting one of the SEC's public reference rooms, giving them the name of your broker and asking for Form BD which is the firm's registration form. The way to avoid making complaints and filing lawsuits is to do all your research yourself and don't listen to anyone. That way, you won't risk them losing your money. 
that piece of paper full of fine print you sign when you put your money into their care basically ties your hands. Once you sign, they have the power to control your money. If you don't like what they do, you may have to accept the decision of an arbitrator unless you take your complaint to a federal district court or insert language into the original contract which protects your rights. Either way, the hassle can be enormous and costly. Even though stockbrokers and brokerage houses are licensed and regulated, there are many con artists and fly-by-nighters in the field. Check them out before you deal with them. Investigate them through your state securities office, National Association of Securities Administrators and the Seconds. Stockbrokers have many ways of getting extra money from you. The most common problem is negligence whereby the stockbroker fails to comply with an order. Another problem arises from a situation called churning. When a stockbroker churns your account, he advises you to make a transaction which creates commissions for him instead of profits for you. A broker could falsify the paperwork on your account to give you a higher asset level than you're really worth to give you more leverage power. Some brokers steal outright from their clients. Some brokers claim to be licensed when they're not. Finally and in conjunction with churning, a stockbroker can misrepresent an investment with his own interests in mind instead of yours. If you feel you have been cheated, don't just be intimidated and walk away. Demand answers from the broker and his firm. Seek objective advice on how to proceed. Some cases are hard to prove, for example, intentional fraud versus straight-out incompetence. Act immediately. Don't wait. Keep all paperwork. Contact your state securities office, the NASD, NAST, and the seconds. The hierarchy of complaint escalation is. Complain to your broker. Talk to the broker's branch manager. Write to the compliance department at the firm's main office. Send a copy of your letter to your state securities office or to the Office of Investor Education and Assistance at the seconds. Call the Office of Consumer Affairs at 202-942-7040, the NASD and the NAST. Choose to resolve your complaint through the courts or through binding arbitration. Many brokerage houses have a clause in their contracts when selling securities that require you to go through arbitration to resolve a complaint rather than through the court system. The Uniform Code gives investment customers the right to arbitrate their complaints as long as you do it within six years of the alleged incident. You first type up your complaint and send it to the arbitration board of the self-regulating organization of your choice from the ones listed below. They investigate and if applicable, set up a panel of from one to three neutral panelists to hear the case. You're allowed to bring a lawyer to represent your side of the case. There are two procedures, a small claims procedure for under $10,000 which is called the simplified arbitration procedure and the other one for cases of over $10,000. A location is chosen and you sign a submission agreement which means that you will abide by the decisions of the board. The arbitrators are supposed to be neutral people. For a large case over $50,000, there may be two or more arbitrators something like a mini-jury. This is good to counteract the criticism that arbitrators in the past were bribed by the brokerage companies being sued. You have to pay a filing fee to file the case. The opposing party may file a counterclaim or may agree to settle outright. If you don't like a certain panelist, you can request that he be replaced. The pretrial is conducted like a court case with each side offering the other side its documents and other information for review. During the hearing, each side presents its case, offers witnesses, has the right of cross-examination and closing arguments. After the hearing, the panelists discuss the case and within 30 days mail a registered letter to both sides indicating their binding decision. Any monetary awards must be paid within 30 days. Interest starts on them after that. If the loser refuses to pay, go back to the board for disciplinary action. Churning, the dirty secret of brokers. Brokers have to eat and pay bills. Buying and selling is how they earn a living. If they're not trading, they can't eat or pay their bills. Churning an account is illegal but the fact is that every time a broker buys or sells stocks for a client, he or she always makes money. If the client ends up losing money, 
the broker still gets his commission. Read the papers about all the convictions of people in the business, investment, religious and political fields, people who are supposed to help you but instead, they consciously rip you off or try to get you to keep making stock trades no matter how bad they look so that they can collect commissions which is all they really care about. It's so common it has its own term, churning. Churning is a concept used by money advisors. They constantly buy and sell your stocks not because they think it will make you more money but because they want to collect those commissions. If you heard what some of these stockbrokers and investment advisors say about investors behind their backs, you would never use one again but would instead do your own investing. Many have contempt for the people they are making money from. It's like they're jealous, angry people. I know because a few of my buddies were in this business. Scrupulous people generally don't get into this business. It's the wheeler dealer type who's a bit on the scam side who thrives. If you really, really want investment, hire a fee-only advisor, not one who earns commissions from your trades. Stocks and mutual funds are not rocket science. Don't hire a stockbroker to manage your money. Buy your own stocks and funds. All you have to do is buy a money magazine with an article like 10 best stocks then buy the top 5 using a discount broker like Ameritrade. Investor Activists You can rest assured that the trade groups within the investment industry, American Banking Association, Investment Company Institute, Association of Financial Planners, Technet, etc., have lobbyists in Washington to protect their interests at the expense of the public's interest. Investors' Bill of Rights The National Futures Association, 800-676-4NFA, nfa.futures.org, puts out a free pamphlet called Investors' Bill of Rights. The North American Securities Administrators Association does too. There are many, many regulations imposed by the government on the investment industry but a lot of people in this business are naturally arrogant and flagrantly disobey the rules because they think they are superior and everyone else are plebes. Don't let them intimidate you. If you feel taken advantage, start by speaking up to the SEC and your local district attorney's office. Basically, some of your rights are as follows. Honest advertising. Even though investment companies are supposed to register with regulatory agencies and the regulatory agencies monitor advertising sources like publications for misleading ads, some scam artists set up shop quickly, bilk some customers with unbelievable claims then move on before the complaints get to the seconds or the FTC. Just because an ad is on TV or on the radio doesn't make it legitimate. Before you buy, contact either the seconds, FTC, NFA, or the BBB to check up on the company. The right to full and accurate information. Full and accurate history of both the company and the person handling your account both from them and the State Securities Commission. Full disclosure of risks, usually in writing. Explanation of costs and terms. No unforeseen or hidden costs. Explanation of risks. Receive a copy of all completed contracts. Receive regular honest account statements. Have access to your funds in a timely manner and be told of any restrictions or limitations to access. Receive fair and prompt service about your account with any concerns you might have. High pressure sales tactics are morally wrong and suspicious. Obligation to manage your money to the best of their ability. Access to your funds. The right to complain and seek remedy through legal and regulatory channels. Insider trading info. The law states that no company executives or their relatives can benefit from insider knowledge about the company until that knowledge goes public through the media. Any person who becomes an insider of a public corporation is not allowed to use sensitive information or pass that information off to another person to trade stocks to their advantage before that information goes public. Insider trading is persons who have information about a corporation by virtue of position with the corporation and use this information to trade in securities of the corporation or to assist others to trade in securities of the corporation before that information is made available to the public. The SEC's Rule I-0B-5 covers insider trading cases, the text of which is as follows. It shall be unlawful for any person, directly or indirectly, 
by the use of any means or instrumentality of interstate commerce, or of the mails or of any facility of any national securities exchange, to a. Employ any device, scheme, or artifice to defraud. b. Make any untrue statement of a material fact or omit to state a material fact necessary in order to make the statements made, in light of the circumstances under which they were made, not misleading, or c. Engage in any act, practice, or course of business which operates or would operate as a fraud or deceit upon any person, in connection with the purchase or sale of any security. The most common type of insider trading is a case where an officer, director, or other person who is involved with a corporation buys or sells the company's securities while in the possession of material, non-public information but Rule L0B5 is not limited to just this scenario. Some other possible instances of insider trading are as follows. A corporation either issues misleading information to the public or omits stating information it is obligated to disclose. When an insider tells a friend or a lie some material, non-public information who uses it to trade securities, a process called tipping which was the basis of the Martha Stewart case. General manipulation of stock prices by company insiders in any of a number of ways. General manipulative behavior by stockbrokers and other security sellers. SEC.gov. SETI.ca, check on what insiders are doing with their own stock. Streetinsider.com. Regulation Fair Disclosure slash Reg FD. In 2000, the SEC enacted Regulation Fair Disclosure slash Reg FD which requires companies to release important information to everybody at the same time, not just to insiders first. As a result of this, companies are now releasing announcements on their websites when they have important information. If you are a shareholder, you are entitled to see this information. They are called webcasts. Go to sec.gov to learn more about Reg FD. The following websites are webcast intermediaries. They show the announcements of a number of companies. Bestcalls.com CCBN.com Chapter 4 Investor Complaint Resources Investor Fraud Websites 1 there are a few investors recovery services around that specialize in getting money back for investors ripped off by fraudulent investment professionals but they're far and few between. Your best bet is to look for an investment or securities lawyer who sympathizes with your case. There are securities arbitration services for investors seeking to recover stock market losses due to investment fraud or stockbroker misconduct. Check to see if the company is registered with the seconds and has filed a form BD. If it hasn't, call the Secretary Office of Investor Education and Assistance, 202-942-7040 or the National Association of Securities Dealers Hotline at 800-289-9999. For problem with futures, call 800-676-4NFA, nfa.futures.org. Refer to sec.gov and cftc.gov for more info. The National Futures Association, 800-676-4 NFA, nfa.futures.org, offers two free pamphlets swindlers are calling and investment swindles. aarp.org slash money slash wise underscore consumer slash investment underscore fraud. bbb.org, Better Business Bureau. Bloomberg.com, some information about this phenomena. Consumerfed.org. Crimes of Paris UAZion.com CyberZKuritaisLaw.com En.Wikipedia.org slash wiki slash investment underscore fraud Finra.org slash investors slash protect yourself slash investor alert slash P116996 FOE.org slash international slash shareholder, confronting companies using shareholder power FraudRecoveryCenter.com InvestorsRecoveryService.com FundDemocracy.org, Mutual Funds Law Watchdog in Washington HulbertDigest.com, Analyzes Investment Newsletters iExchange.com, Report on the Track Records of Financial Analysts NASAA.org RIPOFReport.com 
securitieslaw.com, securities fraud, and investor protection information. The investorslawyer.com slash common underscore broker underscore misconduct. Wall Street Investment Fraud Lawyer.com slash investor hyphen education. Investor Fraud Websites 2. Financial Fraud.info. Financial Web.com slash stock detective. Forbes.com, look up investment fraud. Fraud.org slash tip slash internet slash investment.htm. FTC.gov slash report slash fraud slash invest.shtm. InvestmentFraudInfo.com InvestmentFraudLaw.com InvestorDucatheon.org, the investor's clearinghouse from the Alliance for Investor Education. InvestorProtection.org NASAA.org slash Investor underscore Awareness underscore Quiz slash Index dot CFM Scambusters.com Scams.com sec.gov slash investor slash pub slash cyberfraud.htm, internet fraud, how to avoid internet investment scams. securitiesfraud.org. sharesleuth.com. stockinvestmentfraud.com. usps.com slash postal inspectors slash fraud slash invest.htm. investor fraud websites 3. brokerarb.com. investorade.com. InvestorProtection.org MediaTions.com American Bar Association Standing Committee on Dispute Resolution 1800 M Street, N.W. Washington, D.C. 20036 202 331 2258 Abanit.org slash public Education or Referral to Investment Lawyer Investor Protection Trust InvestorProtection.org Video about handling complaint with financial professional National Association of Securities Dealers Inc. National HQ, NASDAQ 1735 K St. N.W. Washington, D.C. 20006 202-728-8000 800-289-9999 Nasdaq.com NASDR.com Checks on the disciplinary history of a broker for you. They have 14 district offices. Also call your state securities administration office to check brokers out. They will also try to resolve your complaints regarding stocks and offer a variety of publications. Public Investors Arbitration Bar Association Norman, OK. 888-621-7484. 404-365-0150. PIABA.org. Will recommend a lawyer for arbitration. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. 2033 KST, NW. Washington, D.C. 20581. 202-254-6387. CFTC.gov Federal Bureau of Investigation Justice Department 9th ST and Pennsylvania Ave, NW Washington DC 20535 202 234 3691 FBI.gov Federal Trade Commission 6th and Pennsylvania Ave, NW Number 130. Washington, D.C. 20580. 202 FTC.gov. 877 FTC Housing and Urban Development Department. Interstate Land Sales Registration. HUD Building. 451 7th Street SW. Room 6262. Washington, D.C. 20410800. 202-755-0502.hud.gov. National Association of Securities Dealers. 1735 KST, NW. Washington, D.C. 20006. 202-234-3698. 
800-289-7999 NASD.com Ask for a central registration depository report slash CRD on a stock broker. Securities and Exchange Commission. 450 5th Street NW. Washington DC 20006. 202 728 8233. SEC.gov slash enforce slash comctr.htm Securities Fraud Hotline 800-222-4724 United States Postal Service Chief Postal Inspector Room 3021 Washington D.C. 20260210 202-262-4700 USPS.gov Postalinspectors.usps.gov Get rid of cold call stockbrokers. If you get called by stockbrokers and other financial people wanting you to invest your money with them, just tell them you're a stockbroker with Fidelity, Vanguard, etc. By law, a stockbroker has to keep his or her account with the company they work for. Tell the telemarketer you're not allowed to invest with other companies. Securities and Exchange Commission 202-942-7040 SEC.gov Investment Recovery Services These businesses and organizations help people who were ripped off in fraudulent stock investment schemes and some money-making scams like Ponzi schemes. InvestorsRecoveryService.com Investors Recovery Service IFRN165.com Investment Fraud Recovery Network, Clearwater, FL. Securities Law Websites. SEC.gov slash complaints.html, 202-942-7040. SECLAW.com. Securities.stanford.edu, Securities Class Action Clearing House. Corporate Crime Reporter.com, Corporate Crime Reporter, Legal Newsletter on Corporate Prosecutions. SIPC.org. Securities Investor Protection Corporation, pays if brokerage fails. LAW.uc.edu slash CCL slash 34 form slash index.html, free securities forms from the Securities Lawyer's Desk Book. MSRB.org, Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board. NASDR.com, NASD Regulation Code of Arbitration. FINRA.org slash investors slash index.htm, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, Investor Information Including Background Checks on Brokers and Brokerage Firms. SecuritiesLaw.com, Securities Fraud and Investor Protection. SIAonline.org, Securities Industry Association. Securities Fraud Lawyers slash Investment Fraud Lawyers. Investment fraud lawyers occasionally represent the white-collar criminals but more and more, they are taking on cases of investors who have been swindled by unscrupulous money managers, brokers, etc. If you feel your financial services analyst ripped you off somehow, don't be shy about going to an investment fraud lawyer. Investmentfraudlawyers.com Investmentfraudlaw.com Attorneysforinvestors.com Financialfraud.info InvestmentFraudAttorney.com InvestmentFraudLawyerBlog.com, Atlanta, GA InvestorsRecoveryService.com, Investors Recovery Service StockLoss.us.com, Investment Fraud Lawyer, Specializing in Stock Loss and 401k Hidden Fees SecuritiesArbitrations.com SecuritiesFraud.org Stockbrokerfraud.com, Investment Fraud Lawyer, Securities Arbitration Lawyer. Stockfraudusa.com, Stockinvestmentfraud.com, Lawyer Referrals. Stockmarketloss.com, Ohio Securities Fraud Lawyer. Wallstreetfraud.com, Brokerfraudattorneys.us. Arbitration Organizations. Many brokerages have clauses in their contracts which say you can't sue them, that you must take the case to some manner of binding arbitration. 
brokerarb.com sec.gov/consumer/rproc/arb/toc.htm article about arbitration to obtain further information contact the director of arbitration at one of the following self-regulating organizations American Stock Exchange Incorporated 86 Trinity Place NYC 10006 212 306 1000 Amex.com New York Stock Exchange Incorporated 11 Wall Street NYC 10005 212 656 2772 NYSE.com Philadelphia Stock Exchange 1900 Market Street Philadelphia Pennsylvania 19103 215 496 5000 800-843-7459 Fax, 215-496-5653 FIEX.com Some general arbitration organizations are American Arbitration Association ADR.org National headquarters of this non-profit organization with 37 regional offices Commodity Futures Trading Commission Office of Proceedings CFTC.gov Fee to file depending on the amount you're suing for National Association of Securities Dealers Incorporated 800-289-7999 NASD.com NASDR.com National Association of Securities Dealers Arbitration 800-289-9999 nasdr.com slash pdf hyphen text slash 9890ntm.txt Free Mediation Booklet National Futures Association 800-572-9400 800-676-4NFA nfa.futures.org North American Security Administrators Association 202-737 0900 888-846-2722 888-84-NASAA NASAA.org Will give you local referrals to check out stock brokers. Public Investors Arbitration Bar Association Norman, OK 888-621-7484 404 0150 PABA.org will recommend a lawyer for arbitration. Auditing services to audit your investment accounts. If you think your investment account is being mismanaged, you can get an audit slash checkup done for a fee from Green Track 60 East 42nd Street NYC 10165 800 815 3434 Stockbroker Analysis 576 14th Avenue South Naples, Florida 34102 941 261 9106 $75 an hour Securities and Exchange Commission Info The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is a federal government regulation agency that oversees the financial brokerage business. If you have any complaints and questions about stocks and bonds, mutual funds, futures, options, etc., this is who you contact. They have a variety of free booklets. Some are as follows. Invest wisely, advice from your securities industry regulators. Invest wisely, an introduction to mutual funds. Questions you should ask about your investment. IOSCO.org International Organization of Securities Commissions for all the countries in the world who have them. SECLAW.com SEC.gov slash rule slash conc index.htm SEC.gov slash edgar slash search gar slash webussers.htm Access to Edgar Filings SEC.gov slash rule slash finrindx.htm SEC Final Rules SECinfo.com 
sec.gov slash enforce slash litig.htm, sec litigation releases. sec.gov slash rule slash proposed.shtml, sec proposed rules. sec.com slash sec rules.htm, sec rules and regulations. sec.gov slash interps slash account.shtml, sec selected staff accounting bulletins. U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. 450 Fifth Street Northwest. Washington, D.C. 20549. 800 seconds 0330. 202 272 2650. Fax 202 942 9634. Help at seconds.gov. SEC.gov. Regional offices. SEC Headquarters 450 Fifth Street NW Washington DC 20549 202 942 7040 Help at sec.gov Northeast Regional Office Securities and Exchange Commission New York New York 10048 212 748 8000 New York at sec.gov. Boston District Office. 73 Tremont Street Hashtag 600. Boston, Massachusetts, 02108-3912. 617-424-5900. Boston at sec.gov. Philadelphia District Office. The Curtis Center Hashtag 1120E. 601 Walnut Street. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19106-3322. 215-597-3100. Philadelphia at sec.gov. Southeast Regional Office. 1401 Brickell Avenue, hashtag 200. Miami, Florida, 33131. 305-536-4700. Miami at sec.gov. Atlanta District Office. 3475 Lenox Road N.E. Hashtag 1000. Atlanta, Georgia, 30326 1232. 404 842 7600. Atlanta at sec.gov. Midwest Regional Office. City Corp Center Hashtag 1400. 500 West Madison Street. Chicago, Illinois, 60661 2511. 312 353 7390. Chicago at sec.gov. Central Regional Office. 1801 California Street, hashtag 4800. Denver, Colorado, 80202 2648. 303 844 1000. Denver at sec.gov. Fort Worth District Office. 801 Cherry Street 19th Floor. Fort Worth, Texas, 76102. 817-978-3821. DFW at sec.gov. Salt Lake District Office. 500 Key Bank Tower Hashtag 500. 50 South Main Street. Salt Lake City, Utah 84144. 0402 801 524 5796 Salt Lake at sec.gov Pacific Regional Office 5670 Wilshire Boulevard 11th floor Los Angeles California 90036 3648 323 965 3998 Los Angeles at sec.gov San Francisco District Office. 44 Montgomery Street Hashtag 1100. San Francisco, California, 94104. 415-705-2500. San Francisco at sec.gov. Seattle Office. 915 Second Avenue. 3040 Jackson Federal Building. Seattle, Washington, 98174. 206 220 7500. 
state securities offices. Each state has its own laws and regulations for securities brokers and all types of securities, including stocks, mutual funds, commodities, real estate offerings, uninsured investment products sold by banks and others. The officials and agencies listed below enforce these laws and regulations. Many of these offices can provide you with information to help you make informed investment decisions. State securities agencies are also responsible for preventing fraud and abuse in the sale of all but the largest securities offerings. If you have a question or complaint about an investment you have made or are about to make, call the company or the bank involved. If your complaint or question is not resolved, call the appropriate state securities agency. If writing, preface your letter with Securities Administration Office. Alabama. 770 Washington Street. Number 570. Montgomery, Alabama, 36130-334-242-2984. Fax, 334-242-2984. 0240-800-222-1253 Alaska POG 110807 Juneau, Alaska 99811 907-465-2521 Fax 907-465-2549 Arizona 1300W Washington 3rd FL. Phoenix, Arizona, 85007. 602 542 4242. Fax, 602 594 7470. cc.state.az. Arkansas. 201 E. Markham. 3rd FL. Little Rock, Arkansas, 72201. 501 324 9260. Fax, 501-324-9268. California. 3700 Wilshire. Number 600. Los Angeles, California, 90010. 213-736-2741. Fax, 213-736-2117. Corp.ca.gov. Colorado. 1580 Lincoln. Number 420. Denver, Colorado, 80203. 303 894 2320. Fax, 303 861 2126. Connecticut. 260 Constitution PLA. Hartford, Connecticut, 06103. 800-831-7225-860-240-8299 Fax, 860-240-8178 State.CTUS Delaware State Office Building 820 North French Street 8th FL Wilmington, Delaware, 19801 302 577 2515. Fax, 302 655 0576. DC, City of Washington. 717 14th Street Northwest. Washington, DC, 20005. 202 626 5152. Fax, 202 393 1389. Florida. 101 East Gaines Street, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, 850-488-9805, fax, 850-681-2428, 800-372-8792, Georgia, 2 Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Number 802, W Tower. Atlanta, Georgia, 30334. 404 656 2894. Fax, 404 657 8410. Hawaii. 
Pog 40. Honolulu, Hawaii, 96810. 808-586-2744. 800-468-4644. Fax, 808-586-2740. Hawaii.gov slash dbedt. Idaho. Pog 83720. Boise, Idaho, 83720. 888-346-3378. 208-334-3684. Fax, 208-332-8098. State.id a slash finance slash doff. Illinois. 200 Lincoln Tower. 520 South 2nd Street. Springfield, Illinois, 62701. 217 782 2256. 800 628 7937. SOS.state.il.us. Indiana. 302 W. Washington. Hashtag E111. Indianapolis, Indiana, 46204. 317 232 6681. 800 223 8791. Fax 317 233 3675. AI.org slash SOS. Iowa. Lucas State Office Building. 2nd FL. Des Moines, Iowa 50319. 515 281 4441. Fax 515-281-6467 State.ia slash government slash com slash in slash security Kansas 618 South Kansas Avenue 2nd FL Topeka, Kansas 66603 913-296-3307 800-232-9580 Fax 913-296-6872 cjnetworks.com slash tilde kscom Kentucky 477 Versailles Road Frankfort, Kentucky 40601 800-223-2579 502-573-3390 Fax 502-573-8787 Phi.state.kentucky US. Louisiana. 8660 United Plaza Boulevard. 2nd FL. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70809. 504 925 4512. Maine. 121 State House Station. Augusta, Maine, 04333. 207 624 8551. Fax, 207-624-8590. Maryland. 200 St. Paul PL. 20th FL. Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. 410-576-6360. Fax, 410-576-6532. Massachusetts. 1. Ashburton Place. Number 1701. Boston, Massachusetts, 02108. 617 727 3548. 800 269 5428. Fax 617 248 0177. Michigan. POG 222. Lansing, Michigan, 48909. 517 334-6212 Fax, 517-334-6155 sys.state.mia slash corp Minnesota 133 East 7th Street St. Paul, Minnesota, 55101 612-296-4026 Fax, 612-296-4328 800-657-3602 Mississippi POG 136 Jackson, 
MS39205-202 North Congress Street. Number 601. Jackson, Mississippi, 39201. 601-359-6371. Fax, 601-359-2894. Missouri. Pod 1276. Jefferson City, Missouri, 65102. 573 751 4136. 800 721 7996. Fax 573 526 3124. Mos.sos.state.mos. Montana. Pod 4009. Helena, Montana, 59604. 406 444 2040. Fax 406 444 3497. 800 332 6148. Nebraska. Pod 95006. Lincoln, Nebraska, 68509. 402 471 3445 ndub.org Nevada 555 East Washington Avenue Number 5200 LV Nevada 89101 702 486 2440 Fax 702 486 2452 800 758 6440 New Hampshire 204 State House. Concord, New Hampshire, 03301. 603 271 1463. Fax, 603 271 7933. New Jersey. Pog 47029. Newark, New Jersey, 07101. 201 504 3600. Fax, 201-504-3601. New Mexico. 725 St. Michael's DR. Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87501. 505-827-7140. Fax, 984-0617. New York. 120 Broadway. 23rd FL. NYC 10271 212 416 8200 Fax 212 416 8816 North Carolina 300 North Salisbury Street Number 100 Raleigh North Carolina 27603 919 733 3924 Fax 919-821-0818-800-688-4507 State.nc.a slash SEC Estate North Dakota 600 East Boulevard Bismarck, North Dakota, 58505 701-224-2910 800-297-5124 Fax 701-255-3113 Ohio 77 South High Street 22nd FL Columbus, Ohio 43215 614-644-7381 Fax 614-466-3316 Securities.state.o.us Oklahoma First National Center 120 N. Robinson Number 860 Oklahoma City, 73102 405-235-0230 Fax, 405-280-7742 lacloss.state.ok.us slash osc Oregon 350 Winter Street Northeast Number 21. Salem, Oregon, 97310. 503 378 4387. 
Fax, 503-378-4178. cbs.or.us slash external slash dfcs. Pennsylvania. Eastgate Building. 1010 North 7th Street. 2nd FL. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17102. 717 800-654-5984. 800-600-0007-FACTS-717-783-5122. Rhode Island. 233 Richmond Street. Number 232. Providence, Rhode Island, 02903. 401-277-3048 Fax, 401-273-5202 South Carolina 1000, Assembly Street Columbia, South Carolina, 29201 803-734-9916 800-734-1087 Fax, 803-734-1087 734-2164 South Dakota 118 West Capitol Avenue Pierre, South Dakota 57501 605-773-4823 Fax 605-773-5953 Tennessee 680 Davy Crockett Tower 500 J. Robertson Parkway Nashville, Tennessee, 37243. 615-741-2947. 800-863-9117. Fax, 615-532-8375. Texas. POG 13167. Austin, Texas, 78711. 512-305-8300. Fax, 512-305-8310. ssb.state.tx.us. Utah. POG 146760. Salt Lake City, Utah, 84114. 801-530-6600. 800-721-SAFE. Fax, 801-530. 6600 commerce.state.ut.us Vermont 89 Main Street Drawer 20 Montpelier Vermont 05620 802-828-3420 Fax 802-828-2896 state.vt.us/bis Virginia POG 1197 Richmond, Virginia, 23218 804 371 9051 800-552-7945 Fax, 804-371-9911 State.Virginia slash SCC Washington POG 9033 Olympia, Washington, 98507. 360-902-8760. Fax, 360-586-5068. 800-372-8303. WA.gov slash DFI slash securities. West Virginia. 1900, Kanawa Boulevard East. Number 118 W. Charleston, West Virginia, 25305. 304-558-2257. Fax, 304-344-2229. Wisconsin. POG 1768. Madison, Wisconsin, 53702. 608-266-3431. 800-47-CHECK. Fax, 608-256-1259. Badger.state.wi.us slash agency slash Wyoming. 
State Capitol Building. Cheyenne, Wyoming, 82002. 307 777 7370. Fax, 307 777 5339. Sosy.state.wy us. Puerto Rico. 600 Centro Europa Building. 1492 Ponce de Leon Avenue. San Juan, Puerto Rico, 00907. 787-723-3131. Fax, 787-723-4042.